Ahoy! Weapon perks in New World are weird. Once upon a time they used to be equally strong on weapons and on armor, and eventually they changed that so the weapon perks would be more effective on your weapon. However, at the time I wrongly assumed that all weapons would get the same increase compared to the armor, which is not at all the case. Some perks are nearly twice as strong when put on a weapon, while others are not even one and a half times as strong. They're also directly competing with other perks that you can have on your weapon that often directly increase your damage more. So overall the effectiveness of each weapon perks strongly differs between different weapons and different perks and is absolutely worth talking about. Over the next days we'll be looking at the effectiveness of all the different weapon perks on weapon and on armor and also discuss if I think they're generally worth running and if the increase on weapon is worth running them on your weapon. Our first melee weapon is the hatchet. We'll always go through the skills from the left tree to the right tree and then in the order of which you unlock them. So in this case our first perk is Keen Berserk. This one increases our crit chance while under 50% HP while berserking. So relatively conditional. On a weapon this provides us with 27% crit chance and on armor this gives us 14% crit chance. What is important to know is the difference between weapon and armor. In this case, the weapon perk provides 193% of the value that the armor perk provides. So if the armor and weapon perk value was exactly the same, it would be 100%. Everything above the 100% is the difference in favor of the weapon. You can also see that this is green here. I've color coded this. The lowest perks in the game that are very, very weak in comparison on the weapon are around 140%. So those are red. Then you have yellow in between and the best perks in the game are 190%, so those are in a very bright green. There are only three perks right now that even reach 190% difference between weapon and armor and Keen Berserk has the highest difference of them all. But the difference value alone doesn't tell us if the perk is strong or not, we also have to consider what is increased. In this case the weapon gets an extra 13% crit chance increase and you have to fulfill two conditions, you have to be berserking and under 50% HP. Meanwhile, if you get keen on your weapon instead, you would have a guaranteed 12% crit chance all the time, no conditions. And both crit chance and keen are not particularly valued perks at the moment. As such, I don't actually think this is a good perk at all. In PvE you're mostly backstabbing and in PvP there isn't particularly much value in crit on a hatchet. As such, not really a good perk. Crippling Feral Rush applies a slow when you successfully hit an enemy with Feral Rush. This lasts for 3 seconds and on your weapon this is a 29% slow while on your armor this is a 20% slow. The difference here is just a 45% increase so very much on the bottom end and it's also just a slow. It is a slow you want to have in a PvP hatchet build but not one that requires you to have it on your weapon. So I would absolutely recommend putting this on your armor and never on your weapon. Refreshing Torrent reduces all hatchet cooldowns with every hit. On your weapon this is an 8.5% reduction per hit, whereas on your armor this is a 4.8% reduction. With a quick 4 hit combo that most people use, that is a 34% reduction when on weapon and a near 20% reduction when on armor. The difference on weapon here is 77%. Now Raging Torrent has relatively limited use in PvP. I know some people do the Long Sword and Shield combo and do the Root into Raging Torrent, but in that case you don't really need the cooldown reduction because after that combo you're gonna wait for cooldowns anyways. But for PvE, if you're using Raging Torrent, this is absolutely worth having at least on your armor. You can also use it on your weapon and I think that is an effective choice, but you can also use Refreshing Move instead because you're gonna use a lot of normal basic attacks too. Since you typically run Bane and then Rogue or another damaging perk, you will have to choose between those two for your third perk for a DPS build. Empowering Rending Throw increases the ranged hatchet damage against targets that have been hit by Rending Throw. The damage increase is 31% on your weapon and 21% on your armor. This is only a 148% increase, which is towards the lower end. However, this is still a very effective perk. In any pure throwing hatchet situation, like at the end of any ad, this increases all of the damage that you're doing by an additional 10% when on your weapon. Running throws duration is longer than its cooldown, so you can consistently keep this up. What is worth keeping in mind though is that Enchanted will give you a similar damage increase but excludes the thrown hatchet abilities and only focuses on the basic attacks. So if you're just using throwing hatchet as an off thing with only running throw then Enchanted might give you a little bit more value but in other situations empowering running throw may be better. If you're using running throw in PvP this is obviously also something you can put on your armor but it would require you to use more throwing hatchets after that which many people don't necessarily do or often they will just have social distancing in the first place. 
Speaking of that, the upgrade here is Refreshing Distancing Throw. Social distancing attacks within 6 meter reduce the cooldown by 49% on your weapon and by 30% on your armor. So a 63% difference. Generally a nice to have perk in PvP, which is where you mainly use social distancing at a close distance, but in my opinion relatively hard to justify on your weapon unless you specifically play a kiting build where you're constantly zoning, letting enemies into your distance and then damaging them again over and over. That's where it would have a niche benefit being on the weapon, but otherwise I think the 30% from the armor are pretty good already. Exhausting Infected Throw makes direct hits from Infected Throw, not the Cloud, apply Exhaustion to the enemy, which reduces their stamina regeneration. This lasts for 10 seconds and the regeneration is reduced by 30% on the weapon and by 20% on the armor. This is a 50% increase, but I think the base value here is too low. I think the 20% value on armor is once again nice if you are actually using Infected Throw, but the 10% increase is just not noticeable enough in most situations and also quite laughable when compared to Exhaustive Netshot. As such, I would not recommend running it on your weapon. Before we go on to the next weapon, if you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Also, if you are interested in having the full list already with all the difference ratings and all the stats, basically the same thing like this but for all weapons, I put that up on my Patreon. So if you support me there, then you don't have to wait. The next weapon we're looking at is the Great Axe. The first perk here is Refreshing Charge. Hitting an enemy with Unpredictable Strike reduces the cooldown and it only counts once per hit so multiple targets don't matter. On your weapon this reduces the cooldown by 54% while on your armor it's a 30% reduction. The difference here is definitely towards the top end with 180%. Now the downside is that you have to spec all the way into Unpredictable Strike which I know many people don't enjoy just to unlock this extra effect. If you're running a more bruiser oriented build where you often use charge as your escape, then I would say this is not worth it. However, if you're running a very aggressive chasing build where you actually spec into unpredictable strikes and often use it to engage, then I think there is definitely value in even having this on your weapon. This is especially true when looking at the next perks. Crippling Reap. If a target hit with Reap is below 50% health, they are slowed, reducing their movement speed for 4 seconds. The slow is 50% on your weapon and 31% on your armor. This is a 61% difference, but I still wouldn't rate having this perk on your weapon highly. If you want to run a chaser build where you're using reap, then running unpredictable strikes and running refreshing charge just offers a much more effective method to chase more consistently. Crippling Reap is more conditional since the enemy has to be below 50% health and on top of that I find the difference between a 50% and a 31% slow to not be very noticeable in New World unfortunately. This is partially due to many people using escapes and mobility tools when they get slowed so that makes the effect of the slow itself diminish a lot and then this particular slow is also only for seconds. It's a good perk to have on your armor when chasing but in my opinion not worth it on the weapon. Mending Execute gain some of the damage dealt back as health with Execute. This is 49% on the weapon and 30% on armor. I think having that healing is a nice little bonus for the handful of people that are actually using Execute now that's sped up, but I don't think it's worth putting that on your weapon for just a little bit more healing from one of your attacks. Even though it's a 61% increase, other perks like Trench and Recovery or Leeching on your ring just do this job a lot more effectively. Enfeebling Maelstrom makes Maelstrom apply a weaken to targets hit by the attack, reducing their damage output for 8 seconds. A very long weaken here. On your weapon this is a 25% weaken, while on your armor it's 14%. This is a 79% increase and in my opinion this perk was slapped on for way too long. By now it has been recognized and is being used in wars a lot though, because it is simply an extremely effective perk to reduce the damage output the enemies can do while in a clump. Fortifying Whirlwind gives you Fortify with each hit and also increases your slash damage for 2 seconds. This is a maximum of 5 stacks. On your weapon this is 10% per hit and on your armor this is 6.6% per hit. So the weapon has a 52% bonus. When I last tested this perk it had quite a few consistency issues so it wasn't really working as intended. I think it had a few fixes since then so it may be better now. Hypothetically the amount of armor and damage it provides is very strong. The problem is that you run into situations where you overcap, especially on damage, because the Great X tree is full of empowers of various kinds, so you are already hovering near empower cap without using this perk quite often, which makes this a little bit less effective than it could be, even though it allows you to get to empower cap quicker. 
Problem is, any logical build that's running Whirlwind is also running Maelstrom, and I think Maelstrom on the weapon is simply stronger than Whirlwind overall because it's an instant application, it can't be interrupted in the same way, and it applies on every enemy around you, so it also affects your allies. The Fortify can be nice if you're getting hit by a lot of range damage, and that's a situation where the Whirlwind could be better, but overall I do believe that it is a lot more conditional. If you're running Whirlwind in your build, you should definitely put this on your armor though. It is a very effective perk to have, just not that good for your weapon. Insatiable Graph Oil returns a portion of your damage done by the ability back as health, and also casts another burst around you if you hit an enemy with a detonate of your Graph Oil, dealing 100% weapon damage. The secondary part, the detonation, is entirely unaffected by where you have this perk slotted. Only the self heal is increased to 52% on the weapon, while it is only 34% on the armor. This is a 53% increase, but realistically, I don't think there is much value in that. That's just a little bit more lifesteal. In a chasing build, you're better off having refreshing charge on your weapon, and in a group build, you're better off having maelstrom on your weapon. And that is assuming you want a weapon perk on your great axe in the first place, you can also go with things like refreshing move plus thwarting strikes plus chain and never worry about those, none of which should be replaced by insatiable gravity well. At the same time, it is absolutely a must-have on your armor if you're using grav well. We have more weapons to talk about, and XR has also given me some very interesting statistics about the current player numbers and who plays different game modes. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified when that comes out. Also, as I said, if you want to see the full weapon perk overview right now, that's on my Patreon. Thanks to my patrons for supporting this video, and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.